This episode is sponsored by Hook Relay. If you integrate your apps with third parties like Stripe, GitHub, Slack, or Trello, you'll want quality webhooks that's more than just sending a JSON payload to your customer's URL. Hook Relay is a service that makes sending and receiving webhooks reliable, secure, and transparent automatically. You can watch your traffic, inspect each request, and much more. It's like X-ray vision. Without Hook Relay, you have no idea of how many requests you're processing. Of course, if your app or your integration partners are being flaky, you'll love the peace of mind that comes with knowing that no matter what happens, Hook Relay will make sure that your webhooks are delivered. Go to hookrelay.dev to get started and get reliable webhooks for your app in minutes, not days. In this episode, we're going to take a simple static website and we're going to upload it to GitHub so that we can view the web page through GitHub Pages. And we'll also be looking at deploying the same static website to GitLab's pages as well. Both of them are going to be very similar and it really depends on your preference whether you like using GitHub or GitLab will primarily be the deciding factor on which route you go. So to start off, I'm going to create a new repository on GitHub. And before we do anything else, it is going to be important to decide whether this is going to be a private project or a public project. And typically, when you have your code base for an application, some may choose to have a different branch for the GitHub pages, and that's fine. But if you need to keep your application code private, then you may have a limiting factor here. Because you can only serve your static site on a private repository to the public if you have a paid subscription to GitHub. However, if you create a public project, then your GitHub pages would be available to everyone but also any application code. So I'll go ahead and create this repository. And before I commit any code, I'm going to go under the settings. And there is a dedicated tab if you scroll down called pages. And here you can see that we could select a branch, but we don't have one yet. So in an empty folder, I'm going to start out very simple and I'm just going to create an index.html. And within this file, I'm going to paste in some very basic markup and in the body, we can maybe say something like hello world. So if we just come back to the root of our project, we can scroll down to see how we can push up our code. And I'm just going to copy the relevant bit here. And in my terminal, I can do a git init to start out my code repository. If I don't want to have a master branch, if I just want to call it main, I can type in the git branch dash m main. And then I'm just going to commit everything. And once we're ready to push it up, we need to set the origin and we can do that by just pasting in the code that I copied earlier, where we're just running a git remote add to the origin, which is just a label or a name that we're going to be able to reference. And then we're just pointing to that code repository. And once we do that, we can do a git push. We can add a dash u for the origin, and we can push this up to the main branch. So now that we have a main branch up there, if we come back to GitHub and we just refresh this page, we now see our index.html. Now that we have a branch, if we come back under the settings and select pages, we can now select our main branch. And I'm going to leave it as root. However, if you are using something like Webpack or Yarn to bring in libraries or to compile your project, and that all gets put out to a distribution folder, then you would want to select something like that here. But in this case, our index.html is at the root of our branch main. So I'll just leave it like that and hit save. And I found it could take a few minutes in order for your site to be ready or to reflect the changes. But we can go ahead and click on this. And right now it just shows a 404. So we do need to give it a little bit more time. I found that around two minutes, we can then refresh the page and we would see our live changes. And after a bit of time, we refresh the page and we see our hello world. So let's say we have a bit more of a complex page. So I'm going to add in some information in the head to make it more user friendly on mobile devices. And I'm also adding in the bootstrap library from a CDN. At the end of our body, I'm going to add in the JavaScript portion of bootstrap. And that's also getting delivered from a CDN. And then instead of the hello world, I'm just going to replace this with just some example text. And within VS Code, I could just hit this little tab 
to see what this looks like. So once we're happy with our changes, we can go ahead and commit these again. And then we could just do a git push to push these up. We see that our changes took. And if we head back over, if we inspect our site again, we see that we have our second commit and our changes are reflecting here. But if we come over to the page and refresh, it still shows the hello world because again, it'll take about two minutes in order for those changes to take effect. And after a couple of minutes and refreshing the page, we can see our changes. And that's all we have to do to deploy a static site to the GitHub pages. And if you do have a more complex scenario where you have to build out the project before you publish it, you could do that. Or you could make a GitHub Actions to take care of some of that for you as well. And for the GitLab pages, we'll create a blank project. I'll give it a name. And again, we have the choice of a private project or a public project. With a private project, we would be able to access the GitLab pages if we are authenticated on the account. However, we would not be able to make it public unless if our project was also public. So for this example, I'll create a public project. And I've just labeled my website. If we scroll down a bit, we'll see some similar information on how to push up the project. So I'll copy the relevant bit. And in my terminal, I'll paste this in. However, I already have an origin that I use for GitHub. So in this case, I'm just going to give this label GitLab. And typically, you wouldn't be pushing up to two different remote repositories. However, in this case, I'm going to. And so now I can do a git push dash u GitLab and the main branch. So now we have our main branch up on GitLab. And if we come back and refresh the page, we should see our index.html. And so keep in mind, I created this main branch. So if we come under our settings, and if we come to the pages, we don't see any kind of settings here that we can select our branch. And this is actually all done through the GitLab runner, which is their CI CD platform. So back in our code, I'm going to create a new file called GitLab dash ci dot yaml and the directive that we need to use here is called pages we can say that this is going to be on a stage of deploy we can have a script which we can do any kind of building that we need to in my case i'm going to make a directory called public i'm going to copy everything into this public folder and then we can create an artifact and with the artifact we'll have a paths and then we'll create a public path and we can attach some rules on here and we can say if the and then we can use some of the environment variables that GitLab provides. In this case, I want to use if the commit branch is equal to the default branch of my project. This way, we're not accidentally deploying to our static site changes that we weren't ready yet to release. We would first have to merge into our default branch before the pages would then copy over to the public directory and then build out the artifact. And before we push up those changes, I'm going to just verify that our default branch, if we come over here, we can then go to our project settings. We can check our default branch. It is set to main. So let's go ahead and try to push up our code. I'll do a git commit and then I'll do a git push to GitLab. If we come back to our application on GitLab, we now see our CI CD YAML. And if we go over to our pipelines, you'll see that we got an error here. And this is just a mistake on our script within our YAML file. And do keep in mind that on the free version of GitLab and on the paid version, you do have certain number of minutes that you are allowed with their free runner. So do keep that in mind, but it is pretty generous. And if you're just deploying a static site, you shouldn't have too many issues. So coming back to the GitLab-CI.YAML file, I'm going to create a temporary directory called .public and we'll move all the code in there. And then we'll remove the public folder, which is kind of strange because we don't actually have a public folder here, but within the GitLab runner, I guess it does create it. So then we'll just move our .public to the public folder after we deleted the old one. So we then commit this again, then we can push up the GitLab code. So now coming back to the pipelines, we see that it's running. And this could take a minute to run. Once it's finished running, we can come back under our settings and pages. And then you'll see that we now have a link that we can visit to check out our static site. And it's done. So there's a lot that you can do with these static sites. And in most cases, you don't need a full-fledged framework like Ruby on Rails. 
to just make a simple static site. And so if I needed to create a project page for a gym or something like that, then this is definitely one of the routes that I would go. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.